Hello and welcome to another episode of Standing Stanley Tucci. I'm Hannah. And I'm David. Uh, today we're looking at a lesser known Tucci starring role in uh, a film called Sex and the Other Man, 1995. And uh, today we're talking about uh, Tucci did a softcore. Who it knew? Is, it is basically a softcore porn. Um, I oof. mean, it's based on a play, which makes yes. it art and therefore it's... not uh, pornography, you know? Um, I mean, it's you know, so... you tried defining pornography, right? It's an I know it when I see it scenario. Yeah. But I think as far as something can come close to some kind of fetish artwork. Um, this is the, this is the Tucci Cuck saga. <laughs> I guess, yes, it's, it's very strange. The whole- I mean, that's, I mean, the cuck, the cuckoldry is sort of implied by the, the title, Sex and the Other Man, but the explicit like cuckold pornography, I think is sort of escaped by it because there are many scenes in this film of, Stanley Tucci tied up and forced to watch a man have sex with a woman that he's explicitly said to be attracted to. Yeah. Uh, which is just the but, dictionary definition of the cuckold fetish. Right. Um, but also, they try to twist it where he he's trying to romantically cuck the guy later in the film, too. So we get it from all directions. Uh, we get it from all directions. That's the review. <laughs> <laughs> so who else is in this uh, this film? Who no else? one. It's <laughs> no one. There's no one in this film. Well, I mean, Carrie uh, Wurrer, Wurrer, um Carrie W. She she still acts sometimes. Does she? She was in what? things. She was in. And uh... what? <laughs> she was in uh, Anaconda. <laughs> she she had a recurring on uh, General Hospital. She's like a you know a a soap uh, actress, a soap a soap person. Um, I mean, good for her. Right, good for her. I mean, when she got her start, I think like people would have known her from like Beverly Hills Nine Hundred Two One Zero. It's like another one of like these the girls. On okay. On Beverly Hills now, now to an and then later she did like the the B horror circuit, and now yeah. she basically does voices for superhero cartoons, you know stuff like that. She played the uh, Maria Hill on uh, the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon from like ten <laughs> years ago. There you go. Uh, and then who else? Who's the the lead? Ron Eldard. Eldard. Right. Yeah. We all know Ron Eldard, don't we? From uh, Super 8. Is he in Super 8? He plays a character named Louis Daynard, who I have seen Super 8, but I don't remember any of the names of the characters. So no. that could be a very important character. But I'd say <laughs> most people who watch this show would probably know him uh, from Justified as Colt. Colt Rhodes, you know. Uh, he's a oh. recurring character. He's in 12 episodes of Justified. My brother loves Justified. He, he apparently had a recurring role on ER as well. Yeah, but uh, so did everybody. I mean, that doesn't even count. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so these are our, you know, like our working actors, you know. <laughs> they wanted to be in, I guess, some kind of play that's turned into a film, you know, so, something, it's just, something. It's so obvious that this is a play. There's like... <laughs> There's three characters and they all are just in rooms. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to just scenes in rooms. <laughs> Nobody leaves the rooms. Um, but how does it, it opens with like, what seems like, I thought they were going to be like rehearsing dialogue for a play, but they were, I guess, role playing to try and, uh, try and get it up. Yeah. Well, it's weird. He seems to have this, like they have this recurring script where like he initiates sex by telling his girlfriend you're uh, looking like, particularly voluptuous tonight and yeah. uh, and I don't lie about stuff like that or something along those lines 
Yeah. Uh, so that's his like his go to line, which is part of the idea that this is like it's trying to be artsy by having repetition in there. You know, that's like the oldest writer trick in the book is if you say something twice, people are going to be like, ah, I can tell that I'm supposed to pay attention to that because you said it twice. This is a but thing. it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Nothing. Um. But uh, but but at the beginning they're doing like a more elaborate sort of sexual production, you know. Yeah. He's pretending to be like you know the mailroom boy, and she's like an executive or something, and mm -hmm. they're pretending to hide in a closet and have secret sex, but then they don't. Right. <laughs> and that's the joke: is they do role play, and then he like says, "Oh, and then somebody came in, and then and then we we quit." <laughs> <laughs> because he he has uh, erectile dysfunction which it happens to plenty of guys but yeah. uh but not the tooch but not the tooch <laughs> <laughs> um so that's our cast that's our three people we have you know just weird erectile dysfunction guy the girl who is defined by just being the person who people want <laughs> and having no will of her own outside of that yeah. And uh, and the Tooch, who is her boss, who is attracted to her, and who's married, ostensibly yeah. at the We've beginning got of the Arthur, film. Arthur, Jessica, and Bill. Those are those yeah. are characters. Arthur is the Tooch. Tooch is is Arthur. Uh, you um, know, he's he's like the classic kind of like older married man who's, uh, you know, a little lecherously in love with the young ingenue office worker. Right. I mean, the, the whole thing is at the beginning, it's supposed to be like, he's so stereotypical because he, you know, Bill makes all kinds of assumptions about him, like that he's like really wealthy when he's actually not, that he, you know, uh, that he's married and it turns out he's not, you know, like. Well, I mean, he is and he isn't. No, they're separated. Uh, okay. He's just claiming that he's together with his wife. So, you know, when he first does it, he's actually doing nothing wrong. You know, <laughs> that's the, the punchline is that you don't find it out until much later. But at first, it seems like he's being like righteously punished by being tied up by the man coming home to find him in bed with his uh, with his girlfriend. But at the beginning, he doesn't really know that she has a a boyfriend and he's even saying like we shouldn't do this i'm married even though he's not mm -hmm. uh it's a weird sort of setup that almost feels like this play was written and then not really rewritten rewritten very well <laughs> needed a second uh, pass maybe yeah i mean it was it was a play but like i can find nothing about this play anywhere yeah. it was a play called the captive or just captive i don't know yeah uh it, it you know <laughs> and it was written by a guy with the name of a different playwright but i'm pretty sure it's not the same guy like you can't google him it's impossible That's... and it may have even been a fake name for the the writer director of this thing carl sloven who has done nothing else <laughs> at all he did a movie with jason alexander that was like a mockumentary about a skating competition <laughs> A nice skating competition. Okay, fascinating. Just trying really hard to be, um, you know, Chris Guest, but like Not having absolutely succeeding. no recognition for it, and then doing this, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just get in, make your uh, your golden pony, right. and get out. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to take pictures of uh, of two people having sex. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe he went on to have a very successful career in softcore. Yeah, maybe. I guess they don't put that stuff on IMDb as much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't know how the Tooch got involved in this project. I can only speculate. Uh, I assume he had some time to kill between two roles, and he's in New York. And, you know, films are made in New York, but Films. not as many as in L.A. <laughs> so... <laughs> If you're in New York, you're shooting something and someone says, come in, it'll be like a two day shoot. I mean, like, how could this be a longer than a two day shoot? It had to be two, maybe three max, you know, like. <laughs> had to be one of the shortest shoots of his career. Like right. <laughs> literally not even a joke. Like other than his voice work, this is the shortest. <laughs> 
Oh my um, gosh. But yeah. <laughs> Sex and the other man. <laughs> Do, I mean, do we even want to? I guess we should do a quick synopsis. They can't get it up. So then <laughs> he goes into the office and sees her talking with the tooch. And he's like, I know. I'm going to set them up and catch them in the act so that I can blackmail right. her boss for right. boat money. Because this right. whole thing is he wants a boat. <laughs> he wants the freedom of having a boat because yeah. his dad wanted to be a sailor but he wasn't and uh I his think brother's his brother. a merchant marine sure so he has this fantasy of freedom of escaping his mundane life which he imagines through this you know this sexual conquest of his own girlfriend uh <laughs> who he's rescuing from the clutches of this you know this bad guy um and he, the the nonsensical part of it is he takes the pictures to blackmail him and then locks the door and ties him up yeah which the blackmail aspect of it is like almost never touched on again like yeah it like first of all it wouldn't have worked we learned that later so i guess like in the like in the machinations of this thing there has to be some reason why he's going to give them a check they 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 blackmail him for a check for seventy five thousand dollars something like that which is a lot but like it's enough to buy a boat i guess a small boat a small small boat expensive um but that's like that's like tucci's life savings because he's going through this divorce and he doesn't have any uh any savings um (laughs) and it's like the check he's got to cash the check so he's got to keep him kidnapped for the next three days because the banks don't open till Monday. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't follow the logic of his plot, but it's just an excuse to do this thing where they have the two tied up and they're having sex in front of him. And it's, you know, shown in full frontal softcore, whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh and and the the joke i guess the the humor aspect is that they also infantilize tucci and treat him as their baby when the the girlfriend wants to get pregnant that's her Mm -hmm. motivation is she just wants to have this insane kidnapper's child yeah um and he can't get it up but he can get it up if tucci's watching yeah And then when they're not having sex, they're like feeding him and he's like whining and crying and like refusing to eat. And it's supposed to be like having a fussy baby in the house. Like this is like their practice baby. Right. You know, there's Um, another scene where they get him drunk and they put him in the back of a car mm -hmm. and he's pretending like mommy daddy are we there yet when are we gonna get there you know like (laughs) family car trip family car trip yeah he's doing that's that's my favorite uh, moment of Tooch in this film, though. Easily. Yeah. It's He's so good. Fun. He's just having so much fun being absolutely just like as wild as possible, <laughs> tied up right. in the back of a car. But in, uh, you know, I think in the in the playwright or the screenwriters, uh, you know, attempts to be clever, like you said before, that the point is that, that Tucci... He has, you know, the Stockholm syndrome. He starts to fall in love with his, you know, female captor. And well, he was already infatuated with her before. Right. But starts to become like very like bought into her whole like she needs to get a kid and she's in love with this guy. Like she he's super invested in their story. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess he's sort of also in the place of the viewer of the play, like, or the viewer of pornographic material or whatever where he just gets like invested and he thinks he's the guy who's having the sex when he's not Mm -hmm. um and uh you know at certain points he tries to tell like come on let me go we'll run away together and she's like no i i want to have i want to be with this crazy guy and he keeps saying but you're normal you're like me (laughs) and like the joke is like he's not normal either he's crazy too also, like everyone in this play has got issues. <laughs> well, yeah, but like that's why the they think, you know, that's why the player thinks he's so clever. It's because everybody's got issues, you know. Oh, Even though you would hate to be kidnapped, wouldn't you also be a little turned on 
to be kidnapped by two sexy softcore actors right. um and it's like i i guess it would be arousing <laughs> to watch two Maybe. people have sex but and to be tied up some people are into that but i feel like your priority would still be escaping <laughs> Right, and like keeping there's your this, money and you yeah, know. there's there's a scene later where um you know they they fire a gun but it's got blanks in it so they you know they put Tucci in the car they take him to like a motel in Jersey. <laughs> he passes out when he when the blanks get fired, so you're supposed to think like he's dead. Dead, and I think that probably would work better in the play. Yeah, because you don't expect a squib to go off in a play, right? Mm-hmm. But in a movie, if there's no blood, you're like, "Oh, he's fine," <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, on a stage play, if if a, if a blank goes off and you hear it, you're like, "Oh, that guy is dead." Right. That's all the the information your brain needs to make that conclusion. Right. But in this one, but- we're just like what he's like passed out from like a blank going off and he's unconscious for like the next like four minutes like as they drag him out of the building like this seems rather implausible uh but anyway they get into the motel in jersey hijinks ensue they do more sex uh but uh where where does um bill go he goes to like i don't know goes to a gas station or something and while he's there Arthur and uh, Jess start talking and he's like, we have this moment, we're connected. Uh, And she's like, she tries to set him free, basically. She takes off his handcuffs and goes, get out of here, boy, go. No one wants you. Because she's tired of him hitting on her because he's this close to changing her mind, Uh, but he won't go, you know? And so it's like, what's keeping him there? Why do people in abusive relationships stay? Why do they, you know? It's about something, isn't it? It's all very deep. Um, except <laughs> it's it's really just it's just an excuse to film naked people. It is. It's very much that kind of New York film where you're just like, well, if you wanted to see a sex scene between these two actors, you got what you paid for. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh um yeah so you know he tries doesn't run away he's still there with her and then we get we get like for the next what 10 minutes or so of the movie it's like tucci being like smug like huh yeah you think you have this girl but she tried to set me free right and i think they play chess at one point and he comments on bill's lack of chess knowledge (laughs) And then he starts getting angry. It's like, who's really the cap? Who's really the captive here? You know, yeah. he can't who's... let him go, or else he's going to go to the police, uh, and he's not going to get his check in time. So it's almost like Bill's the captive, and Arthur is the captor. Um, it's stupid. <laughs> it's very dumb. So finally, you know, because we've read Chekhov, <laughs> we know the gun. Even though it already fired a blank, it has to go off for real. Because uh, we're doing a play. <laughs> this is what plays are, right? Like somebody writing their very first play is like, I wrote a gun into it. I have to shoot somebody with it. <laughs> so they, like, so Tucci like gets the gun and he's like, no, no, we're going together. You and me. And we're going to leave him here. No, it's just going to be the two of us. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then he shoots Bill in like the shoulder or something. like Or something. But here's why this part is now very confusing because of earlier. A, uh-huh. Like a squib doesn't go, go off here. No, no, it so, does. You can see Oh, blood. did it? It's not like I a saw... big explosion of blood, but it's just like they show I... him afterwards. He's bleeding. and I saw just it. like zero blood. I must have missed that. Yeah, I don't, I think you see when he fires the gun, it's from his perspective, and then it cuts to him already with the wound, you know, very cheap sort of, uh, you know, production. I mean, it's, a, right. it's, it wasn't a huge production, but I did look at the, you know, at the IMDb, there were a lot of production assistants. I feel like they were all unpaid. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> this, this had no budget. Maybe it did though, um, and that uh, I think brings me to my my whom we also 
uh, for this one. It's very limited. In addition to our three leads, there are only two other or three other actors, technically, none of whom have any other, you know, credits besides this. Uh, So I had to dig through the production to find uh, somebody, somebody I could stand, uh, whom I would also. uh, So I went with um, John C. McGinley, who's a producer on this picture somehow. Uh, You may know John C. McGinley as Dr. Cox from Scrubs. (laughs) What? Uh, that's real. Uh, that's that's factual. Um, I'm you sorry. Know, uh, my brother would know him as uh, as the character Tom Card on Burn Notice. Uh, you know, I or, or those who are still watching sitcoms will know him as Frank O'Sullivan in the later season of uh, of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. He did a show called Stand Against Evil. He did a show called uh... <laughs> he, he did plenty of stuff. He did films. Oh, for he the kids, whatever. he's in Dragon's Rescue Rider, Secrets of the Song Link. <laughs> yeah, and he did some voice work for Word Girl as well, whatever. But the point is, he apparently was also a producer. Uh, he only has a few credits on there. He produced um, a, some episodes of his uh, show Stand Against Evil. Uh, and then he did a movie called Colin Fitz Lives. And then this is like the only other, the only other movie that he did, which is Sex and the Other Man. That I don't is... know how he got involved. He knows some other producer or his agent said, you should start a, you know, a producing a production house. Or I don't know. Uh, just, you know, make some extra money in New York. But it's this is like the only one that he's like not in. I don't know how he's involved with it, but John C. McGinley. That's my maybe. Maybe he owed the director a favor. They they were film school buddies or something. Who knows? Uh, But I don't. I don't know if Tucci and McGinley uh, ever work together again. We'll Uh, have to keep our eyes out. We'll keep our eyes out, but somehow they got involved together on this. (laughs) So that's it. Uh, uh, anything else to say about this film? Um, don't bother watching it. Just like <laughs> read it. Right. I mean, you don't even get that much like shirtless Tucci. Like compared to you know, you know, just watch the um, it could happen to you. You'll see way more naked Tucci. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you're does really his into Tucci bondage play, oh that's the only way I could recommend it. Is you see him tied up and he's gagged and he's like whining and screaming and i mean it's a i guess a different kind of role for him although he's played the adulterous skeevy ex or you know boyfriend before Mm -hmm. so it's not that different or out there for him no it's not particularly different out there i think he gets to have fun with it in some scenes yeah um i basically when he's a baby right my guess baby my guess is that he did not get like a ton of direction <laughs> i don't know um, I, I i wouldn't say that i really I, i'm sure he had long conversations with the writer and the director and was like so what's my character's motivation in this scene you know I, i'm just trying to wrap my head around it you know like just oh, no i think he, he delving in. into the character of arthur like why is he do why does he lie here you know like and then them just you know probably explaining it in sort of an ad hoc kind of way Right. Like making it up as they go <laughs> and uh this you know whether it was well thought out or not the result feels completely slapshot and yeah. bad and yeah. pornographic yep tucci does his best i think you know we get some some nice classic tucci one hand on the hip uh <laughs> exasperation moments yep uh yeah. i don't i didn't notice too many other tucci isms but it's All right. A... So is this the worst one so far or is it still jury duty? Oh. I don't know if it's the worst one. Would I yeah, I would watch this over jury duty. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I think I'm I'm listing this one as my least favorite touch so far. Um just cuz it's so boring, you know. <laughs> anyway. Um should we move on to a little bit of Tucci news? I know this yeah. is a quick one compared to some of our longer Tucci's. That's, that's okay. It's a quick movie. It's, it's a, quick a quick movie. Not a lot of plots. Just a lot <laughs> of sex. Lot and 
<laughs> kidnapping. All right. Well, um, just a, you know, a quick news this this week. Um, you know, another casting announcement. Uh, according to Deadline, Stanley Tucci is going to play Clive Davis in uh, the upcoming Whitney Houston biopic. I want to dance with somebody. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, I don't know really anything about the Whitney Houston story uh, or anything about Clive Davis as a person, what the role will be. Uh, but according to Deadline again, Naomi Aki will play Houston in the musical biopic, which is based on Houston's epic life and music. Cassie Lemons is directing with Anthony McCartan penning the script. Davis was the lawyer turned music producer and executive who had an extraordinary eye for spotting talent. So he's, you know, the producer kind of role, you know, it's, it's, it's typical. He's going to be yeah. down on his luck. He's going to be like no. the last three artists that you got, you know, didn't work <laughs> or what, or, you know, you're a, you're a lawyer. You, what are you doing producing? And then right. you know, he's going to be like, I found my talent. Though, uh, apparently in a 2013 interview, Clive Davis came out as bisexual, so Tucci will be playing another queer character. Continuing to play queer characters as a straight actor, which we said we're okay with. (laughs) We're on record. (laughs) For some reason. If you want to cancel us later, we're we're welcoming it. (laughs) Cancel us, please. We're begging you. (laughs) Yeah. I think I saw somewhere else that... um, Tucci was going to do something with David Tennant. Can, should we look this one up too? Sure. Casting announcement? Let's do it. Yeah, here we go. Netflix boards BBC Stephen Moffat series Inside Man. Stanley Tucci, David Tennant, Dolly Wells, Lydia West join cast. Uh, so not to be confused, I guess, with the Spike Lee joint Inside Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is, you know, just a, a BBC show that's going to be on Netflix. Uh, yeah. I guess it's, you know, part of Stephen Moffat's deal with Netflix that started with Dracula or whatever. Um, I, I'm on record as liking Steve Moffat for some reason. So, so that's, and, you know, Steve Moffat's record with David Tennant is unimpeachable. Uh, so... <laughs> So I can only be excited about uh, about Inside Man. Yeah, I'm excited. I I just can't wait to see Tucci and Tenet interact. I feel like I don't think they be... will actually. I think it's it's one of these the narratives kind of interlock, but not really. Mm. Um, I'm 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 basing this on the idea. Let's see. No, it said something about what his character was, and I was like, how is this going to be? Okay, Tucci has been set in the title role of Inside Man, so he's the Inside Man. Tucci's um, the Inside Man! Incredible, <laughs> starring role! Damn it, I thought, man, let me see if I can find it in a different article. I swear they said, like, he's in America and Tennant is in the UK, like, so I don't know how that's going to work. Okay, the series is said to follow three key characters, an American death row prisoner, a vicar in a sleepy English town, and a teacher trapped in a basement as their lives intertwine unexpectedly. So I'm thinking it's gonna be one of those deals where you kind of film them separately, but their stories interact through like other characters and through Mm. plots that, you know, like they'll talk on the phone and that'll be like the first time you see them interact. But I feel like they'll probably meet a person at some point. Yeah. (laughs) If Inside Man does not give me a a scene at least one scene <laughs> together with Tucci and and Tenet, right I'm I'm quitting this podcast right. is over right and the question is always whether Tenet's going to be English or uh or Scottish you know <laughs> whatever he feels like in the moment. you never know with him I mean sometimes he's American but uh... <laughs> more rarely though I would say yeah yeah um anyway <laughs> <laughs> that that's something to look forward to as of right now you know this is not great but i swear soon we're getting to some really good too some really solid yeah tooch. yeah do we do we have an idea where we're going next um no <laughs> keep you keep you keep you hanging all right all right see you guys next week Bye-bye. bye bye bye